So welcome everybody to another uh, webinar event of Headless WordPress. And uh, as you all know, I'm Fran Agulto with a developer relations team here at WP Engine on the Headless side of the house. And today I'm super triple stoked to have my cohort on the Faust.js uh, team Merlin that maintains the Faust framework, uh, Terry Goble. Terry, say hi to everybody. Hey, folks. Uh, my name is Terry. Um, I'm a software engineer with Faust's uh, team uh, with WP Engine, um, working on utilities there. And I am so happy to be talking with you today. Um, thank you so much for your time and for, for coming to chat with us. All right. Just a few things before I hand the uh, uh, reins over to Terry. Uh, etiquette, etiquette alert for those who are new to the um, events that we have here. Uh, it is be being recorded. Please be excellent to each other um, and be kind to all shared demo resources. Um, and Terry just introduced herself. So the agenda for today, as the bullet points say, we're going to go over what is headless WordPress? How do you know if it's right for you and your client or maybe you're a hobbyist or if you're just delving in, you might be in a boot camp and you're like, should I do full stack web development? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Faust, we're going to overview the Faust tools, how Faust can help with the challenges of headless development. Uh, someone is coming in, let me admit. All right. And then around the corner, the app router, which is the new Next.js 13 uh, feature. And that's kind of like a mental model mind shift as well, because it's not the pages director anymore. And then uh, we're going to go over uh, next steps. So um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go over and hand it over to Terry. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fran. Um, so let's start off with uh, just a really brief overview of what headless means. Um, I know some of you in the call may be experienced with uh, headless versus traditional WordPress. Um, but for those of you who aren't, um, I remember being very confused about the, the differences initially when I um, first started delving into it. So let's take a moment to talk about headless in general. Go ahead. Perfect. Um, so what is headless WordPress? Well, it is a type of WordPress installation that some folks use where the front end, which is the part of the website that folks interact with, is separated um, from the back end the part of the website that users don't see, um, database and other utilities. Uh, that's sort of why it's called headless, is that uh, the head, the front end, has been kind of chopped off. Um, and there are a lot of reasons why you would do that. Um, part of which is this allows you to use WordPress to power your site's content while using uh, different frameworks or technologies for the front end. Go ahead. Perfect. Um, to illustrate this just a little bit more, I made this uh, sort of graphic here. We've got traditional WordPress on the left-hand side, um, where we are starting off with content. Um, we have WordPress themes and plugins uh, that are part of the WordPress ecosystem that all uh, coincide in the same place and work together um, in order to make our uh, visual um, that our folks who are visiting our site interact with. So that's the traditional WordPress. Headless WordPress is on our right side. And Headless WordPress uses the same kind of uh, WordPress functionality on the back end. Um, but then it also has content APIs, um, such as uh, WP GraphQL or REST, and those interact with front end frameworks. Um, for example, we've got two here that are visualized. We have a React Next.js framework that's powering the site um, on the left hand side. And what's really cool about this is that you can use the same uh, back end uh, information and data uh, and configuration. You can actually use that for a mobile app that might use React Native instead. Um, so there's a lot of utility and power to it. Um, 
But that's just a very general overview. Hopefully that helps uh, lay the groundwork for some of our discussions about Faust. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next one. So a, qu a couple questions you might be having now is, um, you know, say you have a traditional WordPress site or sites um, that you maintain and you're trying to figure out, okay, so should I delve into headless? What, what are some of the main benefits that I can uh, look, look into? Like, why would I want to even touch some of the complexities related to headless? Um, well, there are a couple of reasons here listed. There's several more that are a bit more complex, but these are some of the main ones that folks typically come to headless with. Um, you have that flexibility of using a different front end framework and technology that's just better suited for your needs. Um, you also, if you have security concerns or um, potentially if you're running sites that are uh, need more robust security, Headless is actually quite an uh, effective way to do that, um, in part because it's not uh, the front end and the back end have that extra layer of separation. Um, and if speed improvement is needed, which I'm sure a lot of the folks on this call uh, could always use speed improvements on their sites, uh, Headless supports uh, really fast loading with static page generation. Um, it also opens up Lot of different utilities for folks to um, use front end frameworks that uh, really speed up the rate at which your, your user can interact with content on your site. All right, let's go to the next one. All righty. Perfect. So that's where Faust comes in. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Faust, what it is, um, what the mission of Faust is as well as uh, what are some of the things that can help with uh, headless WordPress development. All right, let's go to the next one. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so let's talk first a little bit about what Faust is and um, how it is geared towards headless development. Essentially, Faust is a JavaScript framework um, and it, its primary goal is to help folks find a path to use WordPress for headless applications. Um, we'll talk about some of the detriments of headless as we go through Faust 2 um, and how Faust helps mitigate some of those detriments. Um, and it helps folks uh, make that connection between their JavaScript front ends um, and their WordPress backends. So essentially, go to the next slide. The mission of Faust is to just reduce the complexity wherever we can um, with building headless WordPress front ends. As you can imagine, when you separate the front end from the back end, there are complexities that are introduced. Um, and that's where Faust sits, is kind of in the middle of those two layers of uh, your website. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is a, an overview of Faust tools. Um, we have several more tools, but these are the, the ones that we're going to be focusing on a bit more today. And there's also some supplemental material that uh, Fran has made on a few of our other utilities. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the Faust toolbar, um, which is geared towards uh, recreating a familiar publisher experience, uh, providing a, like a cohesive experience with WP Admin. When using Headless uh, with uh, WordPress, um, that functionality uh, is affected. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that and how Faust helps mitigate some of that. The plugin system that we have, we'll also talk a bit more about. Um, we've developed an ecosystem that allows folks to build uh, with more flexibility to meet those goals. We also have support for the Gutenberg block editor. Um, with headless WordPress, the Gutenberg block editor, um, it sort of breaks some of the communication that Gutenberg has with your back end, uh, or with your front end rather. And uh, what we've done is we've leveraged uh, different utilities in order to help uh, have those two pieces communicate again effectively. Um, for your publisher's experience. 
We've also got previews, um, which will help you and your publishers preview the content changes on the headless front end. And we've got uh, an entire template hierarchy that's been developed to resolve those typical WordPress templates um, in the headless front end as well. So essentially, um, all of these tools are geared towards um, recreating a lot of those traditional WordPress experiences um, that are uh, affected by headless. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so let's just jump into a couple of these items here. We've got uh, one user experience related to Gutenberg blocks and headless, which is um, the Gutenberg blocks in WordPress is challenging with headless front-end frameworks, forcing developers to duplicate work in order to bridge the two. And folks need a way to bridge these in order to have a more intuitive and efficient developer experience. Go ahead to the next slide. So we know that users want to drag and drop what you see is what you get editing experience, which Gutenberg can provide in a non-headless application. However, with headless, folks have to maintain a Gutenberg version of components and a version that they actually use in their JavaScript front end in order to use Gutenberg blocks in headless apps. And what Faust does is it aims to provide developers with the tools needed to match or extend the UI block editing experience in headless with something called the React Gutenberg bridge. This bridge um, takes the content that's made um, on your back end and it helps translate it into uh, different uh, components that you can then use in your front end. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on when we talk uh, over the uh, request re request for comments related to components and, and Gutenberg 2. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Another major piece here is the WordPress template hierarchy. Um, so for folks using uh, Headless and WordPress, um, the, the key takeaway is they want to preserve the way that this key feature works in WordPress so that transitioning to a headless front end preserves the same template possibilities and routing um, that they're accustomed to in classic WordPress. Let's go ahead to the next slide. And for folks who are looking for that familiar intuitive experience, um, that is part of what's affected when you, you essentially cut off the front end uh, of WordPress. So Faust helps provide this experience back um, to headless developers by closely implementing the behavior of the WordPress template hierarchy via a JavaScript GraphQL front end configuration. All right, let's go to the next one. Perfect. The plugin system too. Um, folks want to make shareable plugins for a variety of uses and uh, to push their creativity further. Um, a lot of WordPress developers uh, have this mentality um, from their traditional time uh, in development and they want to extend that into headless. So what we've done is we've created a plugin system. Go ahead to the next slide. And this plugin system um, is sort of an ecosystem that helps folks build on top of Faust to allow developers to flexibly use the framework to meet their goals. And with that, folks can make sure of the plugins, they can uh, make things that are geared towards their particular use cases um, and share those uh, with others in the community. Maybe a good place here to mention, if you don't know already, that um, that Faust is open source. Uh, so we oftentimes have uh, others who uh, contribute um, and who uh, provide a PRs to us or, or pull requests in order to help resolve some of their use cases. Um, and we are always uh, happy to talk with folks in the community about what their needs look like. 
Let's go ahead to the next slide. All right. Another thing that uh, comes up in headless conversation a lot is the way that previews are affected by headless use. Um, when using headless WordPress, previews are, are impacted. And what Faust helps do, do here is uh, it helps bring that traditional WordPress experience of previews back. Go to the next slide. And it does this by redirecting you to the correct page in your headless WordPress site with the latest preview data. Um, and this is something that publishers can interact with um, in WP Admin when they're editing their posts. Um, and uh, what we're doing now is we're refining previews in order to further make it feel uh, and act like traditional WordPress. Let's go ahead to the next slide. So talking a little bit more about what the team is developing now, um, where a couple of our pivot points are, and um, some of our goals for this next uh, couple of months. Let's go ahead and look at what's around the corner. So as uh, Fran mentioned, when we first uh, opened up our call, we're working on an app router, um, RFC, request for comments. Um, as some of you may know who have developed with Next, Next.js has just recently introduced a new feature called App Router, um, in which a new directory called App is used to create and route pages. Um, it's quite powerful. It's uh, now in the implementation phase for a lot of folks who were originally using that uh, the app uh, routing system that Next.js had prior, prior to that update. Um, and so we're also pivoting. We've been researching how to support the Next.js App Router in Faust. Um, we actually have uh, uh, Blake here on the call. He's been uh, doing great work with developing that R uh, RFC. And if we can drop the link into the chat, that would be great, Fran, if you would do that real quick for us. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who are interested, please take a look. Um, it's open for any comments or questions, and uh, our team is always really happy to, to interact and help try to clarify um, where the work is going and what kinds of, of impacts uh, this might have on, on developing faster in headless WordPress. If you're having trouble finding the link, I can pull it up too if you need to. That 15, uh, 1520 issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm on the repo right now. And it's going to be interesting too, Terry, because like um, Blake did a, a great write up. I'm going to mm -hmm. uh, drop it in here now on the, the mental model shift, because I'm going to have to like kind of just using uh, the pages directory um, mm -hmm. since the infancy of Next.js and now. We have this app router where that's the, the directory where you could pretty much um, put everything in, I guess, as far as that. And then it defaults to uh, React server components um, unless you you declare like at the top, I think the syntax and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Blake, at the syntax, if you want it to defer to client side, it's like a string that says use client uh, at the top of like near your import statements on a file. But. I'm going to have to take some Next.js 13 stuff, uh, basics. But anyway, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It'll be it'll be an interesting mind shift for sure. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about um, how the community feels and, and how this can impact their work. And Blake has done an excellent job. Thank you so much, Blake, for your hard work on this. Um, so you have that link now in the chat. Um, please feel free to take a look, bookmark it, come back to it. Um, let's talk about the next RFC that our team has built out. Go to the next slide. Thank you. There it is. Um, this one, um, for those of you who, who are in attendance who use React, this will be an exciting one for you. Um, but the team is currently developing React components, components uh, 
that can convert into Gutenberg blocks. And this will enable folks to utilize the power of React in WordPress development um, a little bit more smoothly than, than what has been uh, the case for prior headless development with React. And uh, this approach will also make it a lot easier to keep code dry and maintain a consistent UI across different parts of the WordPress site. Um, so please feel free to find out a little bit more. I see that you just posted this, Fran, in the chat. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm really excited about this. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll have a little bit more chatter on it uh, and that folks will uh, be ready to, to start using it um, to meet their React uh, front end needs as they start building out with headless. Go ahead and move to the next one. Awesome. So we've got a couple of next steps for you. Um, we've developed uh, a lot of different things in order to communicate with the community. Um, first off, I want to encourage you to uh, try it out and submit feedback to us on GitHub. Um, we're sort of pivoting now to, as much as possible, um, uh, have transparency in discussions and uh, robust uh, conversations on GitHub for Faust.js. So please um, come and visit us and take a look and leave comments. Um, I'd also encourage you to try it out on Atlas using the Faust por portfolio blueprint. Um, and it's a really quick setup for you. Uh, if you can post these links to, to the chat, the Faust Portfolio Blueprint uh, will get you up and running in uh, about five minutes or so. It, it's quite fast. Um, so you can play with the utilities, take a look at the repo, um, sort of tinker with it. And uh, you can also join our Discord we have here. Um, Fran will be uh, putting that link in the chat in a moment. Uh, the Discord has a Faust specific channel where uh, folks are always asking back and forth uh, different questions on how to utilize the resource. So please come and visit us and chit chat. Um, we also have a documentation site that has a lot of different, uh, uh, different utilities on there for getting an example project up and going. Um, general questions about filters, functions, different areas of the app. Uh, we have a frequent, frequently asked questions page. Um, so we've got a lot of different tools that are set up on that site. So uh, please feel free to come and take a look. And if you need some help with posting these, I can help you here too, Fran. Uh, yeah, if you no could. Problem. Yeah, no problem. Let me just pull these guys out here. And that's this core. Whoops. There you go. And then um, I've got a couple of uh, links too that I'm just going to paste in here. Uh, these are these are links to uh, content that um, my coworker Jeff Everhart and myself wrote in deeper dive tutorials, uh, written content in Faust uh, with understanding the entire auth system in Faust, uh, writing uh, fragments and understanding WP GraphQL in Faust, as well as pagination and how the Apollo client and how to interact with it in Faust.js. And then there's like a high level overview of Faust and its template hierarchy. Uh, let me just copy all these. Oh, you got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks, Siri. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but other than that, um, that's the end of the presentation. The one thing I actually um, wonder, I, I do have, is Blake still in here? Yeah, he is. Uh, Blake, I was going to ask you, um, as far as like Next.js is concerned, will there, do you know if there's, as far as Vercel's plans in Next.js, are they going to like ultimately just move away from next 12 and not ever support the pages uh, directory anymore? Or 
do you think they're going to support both for a while but then slowly move into you know what i mean it's not going to happen like right away but do you think they'll eventually not support the the old pages uh style yeah it's hard to say they haven't said anything officially uh well what they have said officially is that both will be supported the app router and the pages router i don't see the pages router going anywhere for a couple of years it seems oh, but i would assume you know after a good amount of time they'll probably start transitioning to the app router since that's kind of the way things are going but um yeah i don't think that'll happen for a while okay all right because it's it's funny i just in 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 my mindset and if anybody's on on the call has used the current faust with i mean in my mind i'm like oh when we move and support the app router will that screw up our current template hierarchy within the faust frame you know what i mean like are we gonna have to kind of rejigger like an entire code base for the app router and the or you know how, how does that how did how do you foresee that happening yeah well for the time being there's going to be a separate package for the for the uh, app router support okay um and so hopefully hopefully we could can you know kind of support both in tandem have you know we can we can um you know decipher if you're using the pages uh router or the app router and then kind of you know load whatever logic's necessary for that but uh for right now for the experimental stuff that we're doing in app router that's in a separate package so just to make sure it doesn't commingle with your current production Faust code. Um, but hopefully, once everything's production ready and our support for app routers there, that will all just live in the Faust core package. Okay, sounds good. Oh man, yeah, guys, we ha we always manage to make web development uh, more complex than it really <laughs> needs to be. <laughs> Everything's so ephemeral in our world, man. All, all these changes, but it, but it's also why you jump into this stuff. Awesome! Uh, thanks for the chime in, Blake. And I'll definitely reread your uh, your write up on it because it's 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 cool to to understand. Hey, this is the mental model shift as a developer that uh, we're going to have to take when we uh, when and if I guess you adapt the uh, the app router. 